Hey YouTube, Kira Twig here, bringing you all my Desfrog Yu-Gi-Oh deck profile for April 2019. Wanted to do this deck profile, it looked like a lot of fun. Uh, big thanks to my girlfriend Marissa, it was actually her idea uh, for the deck. Uh, more of a take on using the old school frogs mixed in with the new frogs, just to really focus on the main card of the deck, which is Death Frog, using Death Croaking and the famous uh, Frog Fusion, which we'll show later on in the video as well. So the whole point of the deck is to use all the frog support just to get the main focus of Death Frog, which is special summoning this card very quickly to the field, then using Death Croaking to take out your opponent's cards, and then just hit for game. So very happy with the results we came up with so let's go ahead and get started with the deck profile so to start off for the monsters your key card of the deck is death frog we are i would say highest level frog of all the frogs uh, in the deck when this card is tribute summoned successfully you can special summon death frogs from your hand or deck up to the same number of tadpoles in your graveyard so you want to set up tadpoles uh in your graveyard which can be easily achieved with some of the other frogs we run in the deck for the setup and then also just you know setting up tadpole on the field to be destroyed by battle can also give it uh, the graveyard effect when it's destroyed to add more tadpoles to reuse for other effects. But you need the three death frogs just for that easy special summon because if you don't go for the death croaking play, you can always just, you know, use these for link fodder, um, the star boy, or, you know, higher link since you are getting three monsters out at once with the tribute summon. So a very, very useful move to go for for sure. I also run three tadpole your backup to death frog uh, when this card on your side of the field is destroyed by uh, battle and sent to the graveyard you can add any number of tadpole from your deck to your hand then shuffle your deck so even if you don't you know resummon the tadpoles to the just be destroyed again because they won't have the search you can have the option to use them for cards like swap frog um, and then or just have extra fodder because we do run cards like more ray of greed to reshuffle back into the deck for more consistent draw power because it does give you the water requirements for shuffling back into the deck but also just having uh, those search options are your biggest key play but tadpoles in the graveyard are also a uh, key necessity to the death frog special summon and I also run for the other backup support. Some of the more well-known frogs are Swap Frog, three of this one, just an easy special summon. The scent effect, Swap Frog definitely does set up all of your plays. Uh, also, it's a special summon for the discard, so then you can go ahead and tribute into your Death Frog after you summon Swap Frog out and then go for that play, as long as you have the tadpoles set up. So remember that. Uh, it's very key that you have the tadpoles in the graveyard before you go for the tribute summon. I also run three Dupe Frog. This one, uh, this card's name is treated as Death Frog while face up on the field and your opponent cannot select another monster as an attack target. And when this card is set from the field to the uh, graveyard, you can add one Frog Monster except Dupe Frog or Frog the Jam, which is obviously now Slime Toad, from your graveyard to your hand. You gotta love the old text of the uh, Dupe Frog. But that search for Dupe Frog, especially in this type of deck, we're running way more frogs. Uh, definitely does give you those search options depending on what you need. Obviously Tadpole, not yet a frog so you can't search for that but being able to search for you know your tribute option definitely is helpful for sure and I have the two Ronin Toten. This card definitely does help for the special summon. Its name is treated as Death Frog while uh, face up on the field. And you can remove from play one frog monster in your graveyard except Frog the Jam. Two special summon this card from your graveyard. This card cannot be used as synchro material, but just that Death Frog option. Because uh, with cards like Death Froking, needing three face up Death Frogs definitely does come in handy. I have the two in here. I would run the three. I have the Flip Frog, frog which we tried to run as many different frogs as possible in the deck as well so um, if you want you can either take out uh, the flip frog frog for the third <laughs> it's even you know uh, messing up my pronunciation of the name for the third ronin totem just because that death frog is very very important um, or you can take out our uh, next option which is the uh, beals frog just one of those uh, three options which we also mentioned just uh, the flip flop frog or one of the two beals frogs beals frog increases the attack uh, points by 300 for each tadpole in the graveyard so just another power boost card option uh, to run in between so either one of these two or the flip frog for the third ronin totem uh, just because you really do want to run three four it's easy special summon from the graveyard and just that death frog option 
And that is it for the monsters. Well, now, actually, nope, made the mistake there. There is one more monster that we can't forget, and that is Treeborn Frog. I run the one Treeborn just because it's easy to set up in the graveyard with Foolish Burial, but also because of the fact that D3S Frog has a um, attack gain with the Treeborn. So the faster you can set it up in the graveyard, the more you can have for that power boost. Uh, just the one of, though. Uh, when it does come up, when you have uh, no... Uh, face up you must not control any spell or traps to activate and resolve this effect if that does happen and you have that option available to you you can special summon it and have that tribute set right there or just another easy link option uh, otherwise but now that is it for the monsters. We'll now move on to the spells. I run the one Death's Croaking. Uh, you can mix around this number with some of the other spells that we'll get to. I only decided to run one, though, uh, just for the fact that it is kind of a dead draw. Otherwise, you can't shuffle it back with Moray of Greed. But it is a really good kill card when it does come up. We do run the Moray of Greed, so you shuffle through a lot of different card options to end up drawing this card by shuffling back Water Monsters. But you just need that uh, Death's Frog set up to succeed successfully use this card so just one of the reasons why we only run it at one for more power boosts for our other uh, frogs, we run three wetlands. All aqua type, water, level two or lower monsters gain 1,200 uh, attack. And with this, you just have more power base options if you want to crash your tadpole into your opponent's monsters. Boosting up uh, the attack of these cards definitely does help you from being obviously uh, killed pretty easily by your opponent because tadpole has zero attack. But also just being able to boost all your other uh, level two or lower frogs definitely does come in handy. For some other uh, spells, I run two Aquarium Stage. Uh, with this one, water monsters you control cannot be destroyed by battle with a non-water monster. And also just that scent effect. Uh, the other effect is with Aqua Actresses. But if this card is sent from the field to the graveyard, you can target one Aqua monster in your graveyard and special summon it. Also, you cannot special summon monsters for the rest of this turn except Aqua monsters. Now, it only you know says Aqua, but it doesn't say the levels. So you can even get Death Frog back onto the field. It doesn't get the tribute summon but just being able to summon a bigger powerhouse back to the field with aquarium stage and then also have them be protected by battle definitely does uh, come in handy it's why i like to run the two and also i run one aquarium set just another additional boost and special summon option uh, with uh, wetlands as well just for bigger numbers especially with some of our other uh, frogs that even have greater attack and some of our other uh, you know water monsters which we run in the extra deck can definitely be boosted by these as well and we were speaking of it plenty enough before, but the three Moray of Greed, you shuffle two water monsters from your hand into the deck to draw three cards. Just being able to, you know, shuffle back resources if we open up too many Death Frogs, you know, that we don't have anything to tribute them out for, uh, definitely. Or if we get those searches for the tadpoles and we're not ready to set them up in our graveyard yet, but we need other plays to go for, shuffling these back uh, for the Moray of Greed definitely does help for that draw three. And I also run two Salvage. This one just, you know, graveyard recycle. Can't go wrong by adding uh, 1,500 less attack, which is a good amount of the monsters in the deck back to your hand to reuse. And I also run the one Foolish Burial. This is for the uh, Treeborn Frog most of the time to set it up in the graveyard. Uh, but if you want, you can also put Ronin Toten in the graveyard to use also. And the one Monster Reborn. And the one Polymerization. This is for the uh, D3S uh, Frog play when you can go for it. Like I said, this is a fun deck. Uh, the point is just to use all the old school frogs. So uh, if you can successfully get out the Fusion Monster, I would definitely say it was a job well done with the deck. And that is it for the spells. We'll now move on to the traps. I run one froggy force field. Now this one uh, works since we run a good number of uh, frogs in the deck. You activate only when a face-up frog monster you control, except um, obviously what is the now slime toad is selected as an attack target. Destroy all attack position monsters your opponent controls. Now this one can definitely get them by surprise if they swarm the field, especially with link monsters always being in attack position and mixed in with all the good number of spells we run on the field, including the wetlands and the aquarium cards. Your opponent might not see it coming and choose to destroy other cards as well as some of our other trap options we can have set on the field and just miss this card completely and just see it completely off guard. You can even adjust some of the other numbers in the traps if you want to run more of this card in the deck. 
which the other numbers being two torrential tribute just easy uh ways to take out your opponent's monsters and then you can easily you know special summon your frogs uh, back from the uh, graveyard to the field later on and lastly just a small solemn engine so two solemn strike one solemn judgment and one solemn warning to finish off the traps and the main deck like I said, if you wanted to add in more of the force fields for more of a fun kind of deck, you can mix and match uh, any of the traps, more than likely the torrentials. I do like the brigade mixed in with the other spells that remain on the field. And that is it for the main deck. Moving on to the extra, we run the one D3S frog. You need three death frogs to make this card. A fusion summon of this can only be conducted with the above fusion material and increase the attack by 500 for each treeborn frog in your graveyard. Now is the only point, but if you can successfully get this card out, like I said, that is a victory all on its own when you can fusion summon using your death frogs to make this. And then if you have the treeborn frog in your graveyard, go for the 3000 point power right then and there and for more of the uh, offensive cards three totally awesomes one of the best you know exceeds in the deck just so easy to shut down your opponent with this card a powerhouse for sure of all the frog monsters just needing the two level two aqua type monsters to make it and I also run for other rank twos, one Harrowed Pure Light, one Cat Shark, and one Phantom Knights of Cursed Javelin for additional, uh, you know, use of our exceeds after, uh, you know, all their materials are used up, one Downard Magician. And then for the Link Monsters, I run three, uh, Miss Starboy. This is the easiest Link Monster to make in the deck for the fact that it just needs two Water Monsters, so you can even use your uh, Death Frogs if need be. Uh, to go up against your opponent and then if you can get the additional Ronin Toten you can get two Miss Star Boys out then have some pretty powerful water monsters on the field to go with your other spells. And then for more generic links, the one Nightmare Cerberus, one Nightmare Phoenix, one Akashic Magician, and the Borlo Dragon for more powerful plays like I said that you can go for especially if when you get the three Death Frogs out on the field. But that is it for the deck profile. I hope you all enjoyed the video. Like I said, definitely one of the more fun decks I've put together lately. But if you're a fan of old school frogs and you're looking to try out some of these plays, definitely do give the deck a shot and let me know what you think. Until next time, please don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. And Kira Twig out.